It's quite interesting to take a look back at smartphones about 10 years ago. I've done it with the iPhones, now I wanted to do it with the Samsung Galaxy series. It's almost unbelievable how much they've grown in terms of display size. So in this video, let's take a look at the history of the Samsung Galaxy smartphone line. Even before the Galaxy S series, there was one in particular that started it all. So we're going to be doing a number of tests, speed, camera, heat, temperature tests, even a whole bunch of things and see just how far the Galaxy series has gotten. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Samsung Galaxy S. Man, this guy's got some excitement, but oh boy, I'm feeling this music. Woo! Anyways, this is where we're at right now. The Samsung Galaxy S8 and the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus dominated with a massive 5.8 and 6.2 inch display. It's kind of crazy. There are almost no bezels on these phones. They are so ridiculously sleek and good looking. And before I begin, just wanted to let you know I am giving away this Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. For a chance to win, leave a like on the video, drop a comment down below in the description, and subscribe to my channel. So I wanted to say thank you to Vikings War of Clans for making this video and giveaway possible with a sponsorship. So as part of the giveaway, just download this game and play it for five minutes. I'm sure you guys will love it. And this is kind of a game that reminds you of when you were young Younger, you're wishing for a strategy game, a lot like Age of Empires, but now in 3D and on your phone. There are massive battles with over 3 million users at one given point, so it's definitely an addictive game on a whole nother level. In the description, you guys will find a link that'll give you 200 gold to start your adventure off with, with Vikings War of Clans. So, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is using Android 7.0. It's not the newest and most current firmware, but it is up there. And in case you guys were wondering, the Galaxy S isn't the oldest Samsung Galaxy phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy i7500. Believe it or not, this is Samsung's first Android smartphone, running version 1.5. So it's not as old as Google's, but still, it's quite a mess. It's slow, it doesn't respond very well to touch or that resistive display, it's chunky. Uh, it's kind of small and cute, fits nicely in the hand, but still, you can definitely tell this thing is about eight years old. Quite a difference there, mostly in display that we're seeing in between these. Of course, speed is on a whole nother level here. So if this is eight years of progress in the mobile phone world. What's going to happen in eight more years? It really makes you think. So here's the entire lineup, the i7500, S, S2, S3, which was my first Android phone that I used consistently. Then after that, I used the Galaxy Nexus. In any case, the phones just keep getting thinner, wider, and more like a pancaked version of the earlier selves. These are the current OS versions they are running, and we're going to start with a startup test to see just how much faster the newer phones are than the older ones. I know we didn't always turn our phones off and turn them back on, but it's still an important test to see for me. Now, I apologize, it's gonna be a little hectic. It's kind of hard because Android, you can't power on with a power strip, so I had to power them on individually uh, by clicking the power button. So I had nine different frames here and started them up as closely as possible to when I clicked it. Now, of course, you do have your own carrier screens on different ones, but I try to get them mostly on the same carrier, T-Mobile and Verizon. In any case, the Galaxy S8 was first to start, and then surprisingly, the S2, S6 next, the S7 is still behind, then the S5, S2, and then the S2, which is still faster than the S7, which closely followed to that one, and then the Samsung Galaxy S3 is in seventh place, with the S4 coming in just a little bit after. So the first one really took a long time to start. I had to fast forward that one as it's running 1.5 on a hardware that is half a gigahertz. Moving on to benchmarks. Unfortunately, the first Galaxy can't participate. And depending on where you live, you're gonna have a different processor in your phone. This is known, so I'm using all American carriers with mostly Snapdragon. The S6 was the one that had Exynos, and look at that, it actually has a really good multi-core score. Overall though, the results are pretty consistent. It's a linear growth except for the S6 which outperforms the S7 in multi-core score because of the Exynos. Next up, the GPU performance. These are mostly running very high resolution displays, so it's understandable that the scores are lower than the iPhones, but the scores were linear as expected. So moving on to the Wi-Fi speed test, I was able to achieve the full speed of my router starting with the Samsung Galaxy S5 and up. The older ones just had the older Wi-Fi chips, so they couldn't really do that. And this is the HTML5 compatibility test for the default browsers. Of course, it is mostly a linear growth here. And loading the same web page in three, two, one, 
Apple.com, the Galaxy S8 loaded it first, and like clockwork, down it goes to the older devices. So the first Samsung Galaxy wasn't even able to load it, the other older ones weren't able to load it properly. So with everything cleared out, I wanted to do some app launching here, and starting with the camera application in 3, 2, 1 and also like clockwork goes down the line. So that's the speed test, but I wanted to throw a few others in here as they are also important to me. So next up is displays. Displays have changed a lot in size and resolution, but what about brightness and color reproduction? So I wanted to go ahead and test that out very quickly. Uh, basically the results that I saw were some of them had a more orange tint to the very same picture, while the Galaxy S8 of course was the best of the bunch, it was also the brightest, the uh, older ones were very dim, especially in white, and the colors were off. I also did test the speaker sound output in terms of decibels, and it's kind of crazy to think that all of these phones do have headphone jacks to this day. So this is the overall result here. The Galaxy S first one was actually quite strong, and the last one was quite strong, but in between, I don't know what happened there. There was like a dip in the middle. Overall, the S8 B, all of them, of course, was a very deep and booming sound compared to the rest, which were tinny. And I wanted to test the heat output of these devices under heavy load on their hottest point. And man, do the newer ones get considerably hotter into the 100 degree area, whereas the older ones were a little bit cooler. And the Galaxy S8, surprisingly, is very cool to the touch when running some intense applications. And I wanted to see how long it took to unlock your device with the same fingerprints. So on the S5, you had to slide down. It didn't even work with your screen off. Overall, pretty fast. They were all considerably fast. The S8, of course, beat them, but the older ones didn't do terribly at all. So the fingerprint technology, I think, has reached its peak or plateau. And lastly, cameras. I'm actually very excited to see this one because it really, really shows you the contrast between old and new. You would think you were taking pictures with a potato back in the day. So starting with a nighttime time shot, I went out in pitch black around 2 a.m. and took pictures of a local bridge here. Of course, the newer devices, you could definitely see a lot more detail, but more noise to compensate for that. This is the comparison here. You can't really tell just how grainy and blurry the old one is just because of how dark it is, but moving on to a colored shot, it's definitely getting a lot sharper. The dynamic range is a lot better. You can see more light shining through in the background. And this is compared to the old. Not so different when in a properly lit environment. I was a bit surprised to see this. It doesn't look like it's a nine year old or eight year old camera at all. So I'm sure you guys didn't really know which one was which, but I'll tell you on the left, that was the i7500, on the right was the S8 Plus. That one really picks up audio very, very well. Overall, an awesome transition in cameras, definitely improved over the years. Low light is where the S8 really shines. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. If you want a chance to win the Galaxy S8 Plus, do comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. And also I'd appreciate if you guys visited the link and downloaded my sponsors app as they made this giveaway possible for you guys. Eight years is a long time, a lot can change, but I'm really excited for the next eight years for the Samsung Galaxy series. Peace.